Welcome everybody. This is Melissa Thomas of Florida National News coming to you with this week's edition of the FNM Politics in Power series. And for this week's edition, we are here on location in State Representative Daisy Morales' district office here in Orlando. So Rep. Morales, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Melissa. Absolutely. So thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for those who may not know, obviously we're in a midterm election year. One of the key things that you guys always know with this show is that we want to educate our audience on the political process, particularly on the state and local political process. I think it's safe to say that a lot of us are very much in tune with the presidential elections. We, we pay a lot of attention to those because they're very high visibility. But a lot of the decisions that affect our day-to-day -day lives happen during the midterm elections when we elect our state and local officials. And so we wanted to you know, kind of come to this particular office and speak with State Rep. Morales. We interview her often, usually out in the field um, when events are going on, but we wanted to take the time to sit down and talk with her about her legislative accomplishments and kind of give you guys, fill you guys in um, and give you guys a bigger picture of what she's been able to do over the last two years and give you a general overview of what state representatives experience when they go to Tallahassee because there are plenty of folks who maybe maybe even you you may have the ideation that you want to run for office at some point maybe you're dissatisfied with the current state legislature or the way that the current state legislature is running and you know you want to jump in and get involved so we want to the, the purpose of this particular episode is to give you that first hand experience that first hand kind of overview of what it's going what it's going to be like if you decide to run or you know if you want to get in contact with your state representative, what you can expect when you contact them. So we're going to get started here. And, you know, for this first segment, guys, you know, definitely keep your eyes and ears open because we're going to be speaking with Rep. Morales about the, the legislative accomplishments. So it's important to know that there are two key things that are part of a state representative's job. Balance the state budget, and they have to pass they have to pass bills into make sure those bills get signed into law and a state rep gets seven bills per legislative session so i wanted to talk with you um representative morales about the ones that you were able to to get signed into law which is a huge accomplishment for a, a freshman lawmaker so kind of talk about um the the educational opportunities for disabled veterans that was that was one that kind of got a rematch this year it didn't quite make it uh to get signed into law in 2021, but you were able to uh, get the governor's signature on it this year for 2022. Kind of talk about how it felt to, to get that signed into law. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for this opportunity to bring this up because we, we need to educate our community about what, what it takes and what's the process for a state lawmaker mm -hmm. to accomplish and to be successful up in Tallahassee. One of the things that I learned when I got up there was that it's it's, it's how you present yourself, mm -hmm. how you bring awareness to the issues that concern the community. Mm -hmm. So one of the concerns that I had was our veterans. And I was seeing a lot of um, homelessness. I was seeing the concern. I had, I had spoken to some veterans. I've seen some of their concerns. And one of them was the education, educate, lack of education. So this bill, I thought about it. I, I saw the need because there are veterans out there that are not getting the education they need to move forward. That's holding them behind. And presenting it to some of the legislators up in Tallahassee, I went through some of our House chair people, mm -hmm. and those were the point persons that I needed to reach out to so that they can hear my side of the story, why it was I so interested in that particular bill. Awesome. And for, for those who may not know, you know, working as a state lawmaker involves a lot of collaboration, um, not only within the House that you're representing, if you ever choose to run, whether you're on the House side or the Senate side, both sides have to have companion bills that get passed in order for, for that to work. And then either either one of those would get signed by the governor to get to get signed into law, whether it's the the Senate version or the House version, but companion bills are necessary. But um, talk about um, the the process of 
collaborating with some of your some of your colleagues because with um, obviously the education opportunities when you collaborated with um, Representative Benjamin that's someone who's also kind of passionate about it but just that process of talking with other state representatives to kind of get support for your bills. Well the reason why Representative Benjamin um, was interested in it because it hit his um, background because it it really connected with him so um, we collaborated and that's how we partnered together to present the bill to the committee mm -hmm. so we worked together to present it I presented it and he s he would he would explain his side of the story as a veteran so that's how we collaborated and that's how we were able to achieve the hearts and minds of our uh, state legislators awesome um, and for those who may have been following State Representative Morales from way back in the day, something that is very near and dear to her heart is the, the disabled community as well. And you were able in this legislative session 2022 to also have your bill um, for Down syndrome included in the bigger bill, the um, specialty licenses um, bill that got signed into law. How did it feel to have to kind of make history with that one, you know, for now the Down syndrome community to be represented with a license plate. Well, it was, it was kind of fortunate for me because um, uh, I approached one of the legislator. He happened to have a bill coming up on special license plate, and I approached him. It's, it's like I said, it's 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 a matter of working with your colleagues and approaching them in a way that if if it relates to them as well so i explained to him my story why why i wanted this license plate to come up it's because i have a um i have a life event i had a sister that was down syndrome and i felt that that would impact a lot of communities and would bring um opportunities for these these new communities that are growing and not being aware that they through this license plate they can be educated they could be funding for education and housing opportunities so um, it will give opportunity for nonprofit organizations to 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 receive some funding and therefore work within that in in their communities awesome and we're going to keep the conversation going guys you, you guys know how i am for now we're going to take a brief commercial break and we're going to come right back stay tuned The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the FNM Politics and Power Series. If you're just tuning in, I am here on location with State Representative Daisy Morales. We're here at her Orlando District office. Um, we're not far from the uh, Orlando International Airport, for those who have not been here yet, in the same plaza as the Ana Jimenez University, so a big staple in the Hispanic community. So prior to the commercial break, we were talking about the bills that uh, um, Representative Morales was able to pass and get signed into law um, by the governor. So we went over the first two, um, obviously, that were passed this year. Um, but let's talk about a couple of the ones that got passed last year, your very first legislative session. Um, the very first bill you were able to get passed was in the heat. And this is after we were already dealing with the pandemic, guys. Like, everyone was already locked down, and businesses were starting to feel the pinch. So, um, Representative Morales, talk about how you were able to get the barber services bill passed and what it felt like to, to get that one signed into law. Yeah, um, um, the barber service, as everyone can recall back, um, there was a big um, an, um, talk about it on the news, especially mm -hmm. the president and then the governor talking about these barbers were suffering so much because they were, any, they were not getting any clients coming in mm -hmm. to visit their um, site for services, so therefore their, their, their services were being um, limited. So that got kind of a lot of attention. So I started thinking, and um, remember when the governor uh, decided to change the regulations to limit the hours 
and um, cut some of the hours, or the requirements, so that more barbers can be out there in the field and they can become productive citizens, right? Well, I started thinking about it, and it came to me that between me and um, the legis the senator Linda Stewart, we worked together in collaboration to come up with a with a um, with um, a, a remedy. What we decided was to put a language in there that allowed them more flexibility for those uh, barbers to go out in the community and serve the public instead of let, waiting for them to come because everyone wanted to be isolated, everyone was in their home. So what we did was help, um, uh, we were instrumental enough to put a language in the bill to uh, alleviate the, um, the, the limitations. So we allow them to have access to um, you know, go out in the community and, and be flexible to go to nursing homes and, and, and do haircutting and stylist and all that. So that gave them more flexibility. So what we did was we gave them more freedom, a little bit right. more freedom. Just open the door up and then just ha ha allow them to um, have more flexibility. Awesome. And for those who may, you know, go ahead and check out uh, Sarah Representative Daisy Morales' Facebook page. Like, she's been very active on social media, but you'll be able to see during the pandemic, especially once the bill was passed, she was actually out in the community uh, meeting with, with barbers, actually meeting with local barbers and getting their feedback. And um, there was even a sort of mobile barber bus that, that was available uh, in the East, East Orlando community. And you know, it was, it was connected with a back to school event. So how did it feel to see that, like being able to get on board with the bus and seeing the kids get their haircuts? Well, I'm ex I was excited because <laughs> that was, you know, that was giving giving more uh, flexibility. That was actually working. Um, the passage of that bill actually worked. I mean, the people were seeing it. The the public was uh, accepting it. Mm -hmm. um, we went into actually we went to a community. They allowed us to bring this bus, and we had we we partnered with some barbers. They decided to come and join us and. I mean, I'm telling you, the parents were so happy because it was back to school, right. and they were they were lined up, and I took um, you know I took pictures, I, I even did a live video so people can see it, and that brought a lot of attention. I mean, we brought the economic growth in the barbers. Yeah. You know, what's more important? We all need a barber. We have our f favorite barber. As, as a matter of fact, my mom was a barber, so she was wow. a hairstylist. So that even helped me because I was making an impact in the community because I was bringing back memories of, of my childhood when I saw my mom making the, you know, making her ends meet, you know, by mm -hmm. being a hairstylist of the family, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, there was that, I, I, I was so happy and I, you know, kind of re reflected in me that I can make that impact for our community and help them um, bring economic growth and help our barbers become productive citizens. That's it. Absolutely. Um, and I want to get into a couple of the other bills really briefly before we take this next commercial break, but um, you also were able to have language, you know, you had one bill drafted, but had the language moved into another that got signed, but the telecommunications bill, I believe it's called, um, basically it had to do with um, those robocalls that we all can't stand. <laughs> but talk a little bit about that bill as well. Oh, yes, Melissa. There was a time when we were getting all these robocalls saying, um, your warranty on your vehicle has expired, <laughs> and we are giving you a, another limit. We're giving you an option to choose to have it now at this, you know, this call. And um, I saw that was annoying, especially <laughs> when, when us women are kind of isolated in our homes and we get these calls. We're thinking it's a family relative. No, it's someone that's trying to get you to buy a warranty on a vehicle. And sometimes you don't have a vehicle. But um, I saw that that was annoying, so um, I went in and um, pushed that bill. I, I, I partnered with one of the legislators that had one language, and they used part of my language into a Senate bill that um, one of the senators uh, liked my bill, but she wanted to include uh, another uh, uh, stipulation where would be, which would put a uh, charge a fine if you were to call at a certain time frame. Mm -hmm. So we worked together, and that, it was it was just amazing. I mean, this just comes. Up, this is how you. That's how you work with with um, across the aisles. You know, mm -hmm. they see a bill and they, they like it, and they want to work with you, and it's up to how you work with them. So we we decided to work together. I know you know she, it was in the Senate side, but they used part of my language. So that was very that was very instrumental, and that's how we we were supposed to work together. 
and bring that um, to resolve the issues in our community. And that was one of my mission, you know, to work, help solve um, problems. Absolutely. And just to touch on what uh, Rep. Morales mentioned, um, you guys heard me before talking about the importance of collaboration if you're working as a state law mayor, or well, whether as a state representative or as a state senator. And you were um, a nonpartisan elected official before as um, Solar Water Conservation District um, Supervisor. Um, talk about working with folks from either side of the aisle when, you know, having that nonpartisan experience before going into, you know, a partisan position. Like, was it easier for you to collaborate with folks once you got into the house, given that experience you had before? Well, when I was in soil and water conservation um, as a supervisor, um, I remember um, having conversation with um, libertarians mm -hmm. <laughs> and nonpartisan, and you know it was all different, um, different uh, representation. You know, and um, I, you know, what it is, we, we just have to listen to each other and speak how we feel about the issues. And I know that there are sometimes disagreements, but we can't change everyone's mind. We can all we can do is listen and see what we can do a better meant in the whole entire um, discussion, mm -hmm. and find ways how we can work across their ideas. And um, I, that's what I did, you know, because mostly when you when you when you listen to them and you pay attention, that that that's triggers uh, connection because you're listening and you're mm -hmm. and you're giving them the time and they are giving you your time so um, that was something that I um, I'm, I was blessed to uh, receive during the six years that I served under the soil and water conservation board learning a lot and observing how differences uh, with among the communities mm -hmm. have and how we can all grow but we just have to, you know, just move on. We can't take that personal. Mm -hmm. True, very true. Um, so we're going to take another quick commercial break, guys, and we'll be back. We're going to talk more about that experience. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into uh, Sarah Representative Daisy Morales' experience and the people she was able to meet and collaborate with and, and take lessons from. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. I'm not picking it up. You pick it up. I'm not picking it up. Well, somebody's got to pick it up. I'll pick it up. They're clean. Cuz my hand is clean. Oh, yeah, I'm Charmin clean. That's how I know they're clean. Charmin Ultra Strong is woven like a washcloth and just cleans better. Yeah, I'm Charmin clean. The kid does have a point. My hand is clean. Yeah. Enjoy the go with Charmin. And for an extra clean finish, try Charmin Flushable Wipes. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with State Representative Daisy Morales in her Orlando District office. You guys have been hearing the full breakdown of the bills that she was able to get passed and signed into law uh, by the governor, both for 2021 and 2022 legislative sessions. And this last one that we want to touch on, um, this one was a pretty big accomplishment because it was the it was a tax exemption bill that you know would provide an advantage or tax savings for the blind. This is going back to her passion with the disabled community. So this helps the blind, widows and widowers, and the, those who are permanently disabled. So kind of talk about, obviously that one also got kind of built into the huge tax bill guys that got signed into law this year that made history for the state of Florida. It was, it was one of the biggest uh, tax bills or tax exemption bills that we've seen but talk about the savings that um, those in that community get to experience once it goes into law next year. Yes, um, <clears throat> that bill, um, it went through the committees and it went through the House floor. Um, the great thing about that, it takes effect in 2023. So the good thing is that it got a tax increase. It, it was 500, but we increased it to $5,000 tax exemption to mm -hmm. that particular category mm -hmm. um why what uh, uh what brought the attention was where you know times have changed that that tax exemption has been long past due and things are changing um you know the cost of living is mm -hmm. rise cost of food um rent everything's going up so 
that's why we, we focused on that to alleviate uh, some, um, th the burden on some taxes. So we, we increased it so that way they have a little bit more relief on the tax. Yeah, and I mean, that's, I mean, that's a, yeah, <laughs> that's a big increase from five, from $500 to $5,000 back in people's wallets. I mean, that's, that's pretty significant, especially for members of those communities, you know, those who are permanently disabled, the blind, those who are um, widows or widowers who've lost um, loved ones and then have those expenses to deal with. Because, of course, when you lose a loved one, you're responsible for taking care of all of the affairs that come with that. So um, obviously for state lawmakers, remember guys, I mentioned that it's a two part job. Like not only are you responsible for making laws, literally, that's why the, the term is lawmaker, but also balancing the state budget. And part of that, part of the balancing the state budget is appropriations, which means kind of allocating funding for community needs based on what you're hearing from your constituents. So there were a couple um, appropriations that you were able to see, you know, the governor adopt into the budget. Like it actually, it not only passed the Florida legislature, but, you know, was able to get included in the budget. But um, we'll start with um, UCF, the, the nursing school. That was, I want to say, about $4 million that got allocated. Kind of talk about, like, how did it feel to, to see that? See yes, I mean, I, I care about the nurses. I mean, <laughs> what, what happened at the pandemic? I mean, that was something yeah. that uh, caught my my attention, I mean, you know, we have nurses that are, uh, we're needing more and more nurses. Apparently yeah. nurses are, are overworked, mm -hmm. um, over, you know, they just, they just, you know, they're, they're, they're underpaid. Mm -hmm. And, um, what we have to do is, you know, help educate the newcomers, mm -hmm. the new people that want to become nurses and help them understand the process. And what better way than, you know, Lake Nona, I mean, that's right practically in a, in a district that's growing and it's, it's flourishing. So we, we, what better way than help get them, allocate some funding so that they can br uh, bring those students to be successful citizens in our community and save the, you know, the community. <laughs> Absolutely. And then to, you know, this one is obviously near and dear as well um, because you've worked very closely with FarmShare quite often. Um, and one of the appropriations that was that got signed by the governor was funding to keep them going until 2028, I believe. Mm -hmm. So kind of talk about that. How did it feel to partner? And this goes back to working with the other side of the aisle. Um, you know, Rep. Morales was able to collaborate with Representative Randy Fine, who's of course a Republican. Talk about being able to you know work across the aisle um, with the majority party to get that get that. Absolutely, thank you. Um, the one of the things that it it um, concerns me the most is um, food insecurity, and when you have people living in uh, places that all they see is a dollar store and um, there's no uh, fresh produce, fresh products, you know that's a major concern because uh, if, if you cannot just walk outside from your place where you live and get some fresh fruits and vegetables. You're in a, in a pretty much uh, food insecurity area if, if it's more than like t 20 miles or 30 miles from where you live. So we, we need to, um, you know, be aware of these little tiny uh, messages out there because uh, food insecurity is very, is growing. And Farm Share, what they do is they provide um, the food that the farmers have access of. And what we do is we, we, we help with um, legislators provide um, distribution of food. It's, it's, it's a way to alleviate the uh, frustration of not getting fresh f produce or fresh food. So that was, that was one of my concerns. And I, you know, I, 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 I did food drives during the pandemic and I saw the need. And that's what brought the, the attention. When I saw people that were so grateful and, and, you know, the blessings that they are giving me for bringing those services into the community, of course, I would pay attention to that. And yes, I would definitely, you know, that's why I, I had that passion to make sure that food insecurity was, you know, was, was, was there for our community. So I um, wanted to touch on very quickly again the, the importance of working across the aisle. And this is very important, folks, because we, we do have a you know, bipartisan system in the state legislature. And 
as of right now, as it has been for about two decades, the Democratic Party is the minority party. The Republican Party is the majority. So in terms of, you mentioned earlier, um, speaking with committee chairs and the importance of talking to them when you have a bill that you want to kind of move through the committees, because there's that, guys. Like It's kind of a ladder. You have subcommittees and you have committees, and then if it gets past committee and makes it to the House floor, then it can go to the floor for a vote. But kind of talk about working with, um, you know, the ranking members in the minority party and then, you know, kind of the, the chairs of the, the committees, the importance of that when you have a bill that you want to move. Well, very important to when you, when you get to the uh, legislation um, um, area, you, you need to know who is your ranking leader, who is that leader that they appoint in the certain um, committees. Like if the education committee has a committee leader, you approach them for any questions you may have or any suggestions you have. Those are your leaders and those are the ones there to help you navigate through the process of getting your bills heard. Awesome. So wanted to touch on that so you guys could learn a little bit more about that. We're going to keep this part of the conversation going. I'm going to take one final commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about this collaboration part, but stay tuned. We're going to we're gonna wrap up after this commercial break. We wanted to move back home to be closer to his family. We decided to go with pods because things were stressful enough. We weren't sure how long we were going to need storage for, so we needed something that was flexible, and then they can deliver the container to where we moved to. We haven't found the perfect house yet, but we're still looking. All right, guys, welcome back to the conversation. If you're just tuning in, I'm Melissa Thomas with Florida National News. You're tuned into the FNF Politics and Power Series. We are here with State Representative Daisy Morales. We're here in her Orlando district office. And we've been breaking down the legislative process, not only in general, but for Rep. Morales um, specifically, kind of talking about her experiences, the way she's uh, been able to work with and collaborate with um, um, fellow lawmakers, both within her party and the other party. So before the break, right before the commercial break, we were talking about the importance of the committees and getting to know who the leaders of those committees are. On the majority side, they're, you know, obviously vice chair and, and chairs of those committees and mm -hmm. just kind of talk about the importance of reaching out to them with their bills and keeping track of your bill. Like once they start, once it starts moving, kind of talk about the importance of following it to make sure. Right. Um, it's very important. One, one, one point that I wanted to bring up is very important to have a good team by your side. That's mm -hmm. where your your legislative aides comes in, because while you're attending the meetings, your bill may be coming up on the Senate side, but you don't know how it's going on the other committees as well. So you need to keep track. You have to monitor your your bills if they are getting on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And once you finish on one of the committees, you know you have to follow up, um, keep track, um, find out if your bill is actually heading towards one of the committees and know who's the chairperson there or reach out to them to let them know, hey, uh, I have a bill, I would like it to be heard, when is your next committee meeting, uh, could you please consider um, applying it and you know you'll have a conversation with them because they're going to say well how important is it for you and that's where you come in you have to um, you know work with your passion and tell them how bad it is that you want it to be heard mm -hmm. this is what's going to make an impact in your community this is why I want it to be heard because it's going to change it's going to impact some of the citizens it's going to help grow us together in unity so that way we will work in collaboration and that's those are things that you have to learn how to speak your heart out to them so they can hear how you feel about that particular bill that you want to pass awesome awesome so you know for, over the course of the conversation you guys have heard the you know the bills that um, Rep. Morales was able to get passed both in the House and the Senate make sure that it reaches the governor's desk and actually gets signed into law. So she was able to see five of hers um, get signed into law, and those are the ones that were under her name. Um, representatives get to, not they, they're assigned seven um, that they can sponsor, like it is in their name, that can potentially be passed into law. But they can co-sponsor many other bills, 
and you know, State Representative Morales, with the help of her legislative aide, her team was able to, in a way, make history. Like for a freshman lawmaker between 2021 and 2022, you were able to sponsor and co-sponsor over 100 bills. Like, yes. You're you're all over the place. Like your name is involved in a bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, the, the <laughs> same way I, the, the same way I am in the community in <laughs> real life is the same way I was in the legislation. I was constantly reading. I was, uh, you know, every break I had, I would go and read what bills were being heard mm -hmm. on the on the committees, what was the issues that they were covering, what impact was it going to make in the community, how would it in better both sides mm -hmm. of the party, what, what impact and how would it improve the quality of life for our citizens, and those were the, the topics, those were the issues in my, in my, uh, what I would consider. So those are the things that I was looking at, and you know, that's, 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 how, that's, that's how it is. You have to be constantly reading and, and, ca and being on that, on that computer, mm -hmm. reading each bu uh, bill. You also have analysts that are there also. Those are uh, our side analysts that are on the um, behind scene, and so they can, you know, um, interpret some of the language for mm -hmm. you, so make mm -hmm. it easier for you to understand. So th those are other options you have. So you're not alone. You're not alone. Is, is you getting those res that help and the resources there? Awesome, and that's that's important to know as well. Um, just to be aware of the the process um, legislatively, um, whether you're choosing to run for office or you just want to learn more about the political process in terms of who to vote for, why voting is important in a midterm election, or you know what I mean, the the causes that might be most important to you and how to reach out to a state representative or why it would be important to reach out to your state representative because that's something you hear all the time right like contact your congressman contact your state representative you might have been like why though like why is that important so yeah. we definitely appreciate you sharing that that information lastly we want to wrap up you guys know if you if you're regulars of the FN politics and power series i love talking to the elected officials and, and political leaders about their personal experiences like you as a person You've obviously had the chance to rub elbows with, meet, collaborate with a lot of other elected officials, both on the local level and even on the federal level as well, not, not just your, your peers at the state level. Um, talk about some of those experiences. Obviously, you've gotten to you know, meet. Um, you got to meet with you know, Congress, Congresswomen, Congressmen. You've worked frequently with Congressman Darren Soto. You, you're, familiar with uh, Congresswoman Demings, you've met Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, um, Speaker Pelosi was here, you got to meet her. Kind of talk about meet, you know, getting to network with and meet with some of those other elected officials and what that experience is like for you. Well, when I met the House Speaker, with Nancy Pelosi, well, my, my conversation started that what, what impacted um, the Hurricane Maria when we had that influx of from the island of Puerto Rico, you know, my hometown, you know, what, what, how, how that impacted the lives of many with, without any, um, you know, electricity, um, food insecurity, and, 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 you know, how, how devastating it was where the influx came over to Orlando, and she came here to see how, what we were doing in order to help those that were here in Orlando. And one of the things I, I brought to her attention was, you know, we need we need people to understand that we are United States citizens, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that you know we're Americans, <laughs> and and that we should be treated equally. You know, it's not that, you know, why are we, we? We need that the funding that comes in mm -hmm. that we be treated equally, and and that was my point. And I also mentioned, you know. We serve in the armed forces. I am a mother of a veteran. And when I told her like that, she looked at me and she says, you're very young to have a veteran. I said, yes, but I speak up for him because mm -hmm. my time, I sacrificed my time when he was away because I missed him. But I now I'm speaking because you're here and you understand how important to have family. Family is very important to every one of us. So that's what I brought to her attention, and um, you know that was that was something that she had to hear, regardless of what. Those are the issues that we need to make them clear to respect right. us. Absolutely, and I mean that's one specific story. That's um, her her story with um, Speaker Pelosi. She's met with many other people, 
but we're gonna wrap it up there but guys the conversation is gonna continue if you want to hear more if you want to learn more about say representative daisy morales and you know her experiences or even want to learn more about the political process at the state level hit like on this one hit subscribe on youtube if you haven't already check us out at fnn news tv there if you want to find us on facebook florida national news or fnn news tv as well over there but thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Melissa Thomas. We've been here with State Representative Daisy Morales. Thank you so much for having us here. We thank appreciate you so you. much. How are you? Absolutely. Take care, guys.